So recently I took an emotional intelligence quiz and not to brag, but I crushed it. Apparently when looking at expressions on people's faces, I scored in the 90th percentile. Now when reading Blink, I came across Dr. Paul Ekman's work and he identified 10,000 microfacial expressions and was able to determine if someone was telling a lie or being deceitful. There were two people that he realized were great at catching the liars. Those who lost the ability to speak or communicate and those who grew up in highly abusive households. I read that page 12 times. I grew up with an alcoholic, borderline bipolar, abusive mother. And I couldn't help but wonder if what I went through as a child actually prepared me for being successful in looking and reading a room, building relationships, being personable. By no means is child abuse a silver lining, but perhaps our worst situations actually give us our competitive advantage. Thank you. Healthcare is broken. It is reactive. It's not consultative. The way we live our life is broken because we have ruined almost our alpha planet. My idea is to live more sustainably. And how I'm gonna do it is to gamify it. I follow four principles of gamification. One is to quantify everything. Put measures on your walk, sleep, eat, make love, everything. <laughs> Second, optimism. You need to be in control to measure what you're doing. Instead of asking, I can do it, ask, how can I do it? Third one is social fabric, which is very important because you need to play games with each other, right? You need to win the awards as well. So social fabric is very important. Bring your wife, family, everyone into it. And fourth, last one is, is the urgent optimism. Have to new to do it. Statistics tell us that despite our best effort, the human mortality rate stands at 100%. Hashtag, we're all gonna die. <laughs> and in the spectrum of life, we love to talk about birth. We often chat heaps about how to live a great life, and we politely ignore the topic of death until we're forced to face it. And most people I know are happy to talk about death as a concept, but if we wanna talk about it, their mortality and how that impacts their family, it suddenly goes very quiet. And I think it's selfish. It's selfish to leave behind a logistical nightmare for our family and friends when they're trying to grieve that we've died. So how do we show the courage to change the way we approach end of life? How do we make a difference and ease the burden on them? We be pragmatic. We get a red folder, we label it my end of life plan and we start filling it with instructions. And at the very least, at any age, you can go and complete a will and start telling people that you're gonna get prepared. Thank you. At high school, I told my careers counsellor that I wanted to restore classic cars. She thought that that meant I wanted to fix smashed Toyota Corollas. <laughs> I started a career, an apprenticeship in um, panel beating and that was the humble beginnings of my career. Ten years later, I am a classic car restorer and I've just been, I've received a Winston Churchill Fellowship and travelled the world researching the vanishing craft of coach building and classic car restoration. I'm sure no one here is planning on becoming a coach builder but the message is that no matter what trade you pick, it can always be refined, reimagined, and returned it into an artisanal profession. If your son, daughter decides to become, uh, pursue a trade, the thing is to uh, be thrilled, encourage them to see that little things can become big things, Toyota Corollas can become Rolls Royces, and no matter what path they take, they can really make a career out of it. Yeah. Thank you. 96% of Australian women initiate breastfeeding after giving birth. That number falls over the following months, with many mums reporting that they did not achieve their breastfeeding goals. Early cessation of breastfeeding leads to postnatal depression, postnatal anxiety, and feelings of failure. We have not failed. We have been failed. Most medical professionals you encounter in the months following birth don't have any training in breastfeeding. Who does? international board-certified lactation consultants, IBCLCs, who are breastfeeding specialists. So what do we need? We need medical professionals to refer to IBCLCs for breastfeeding issues, and we need IBCLCs to be covered under Medicare. We also need Medicare rebates for laser release of tongue ties, which can cause breastfeeding issues. 
This would save tens of millions of dollars in public health costs annually and reduce the rates of postnatal depression and postnatal anxiety. I think that's worth standing up for, don't you? I wake up before the sun every day, every week, year round for the opportunity to succeed. I'm a national swimmer, but I gave it up for seven weeks to further myself academically in Korea, paid scholarship, South Korea for anyone wondering. I want to challenge you today to give up. Too often we let our ideas, our passions and our jobs take us somewhere and help us run out of gas. I want you to, get, I want you to think about the art of giving up. Think about it for a second, we don't have long, now move on. That's what it's about. I want you to take more chances, learn a language, experience a culture, jump off more bridges, preferably with a bungee cord, jump out of more planes, definitely with a parachute. I want you to be able to give up something and not look back. Because sometimes the art of giving up is harder than the art of living. Thank you. Empowered vulnerability. Sounds a little bit like an oxymoron. Often we tend to associate vulnerability with weakness, the expression of our insecurities, our fears, past hurts and wounds. But that's really only half of the picture because sometimes it can feel equally as vulnerable, if not more, to express our boundaries, our desires and even our pleasure. What I'm particularly interested in is the important yet often misunderstood role that vulnerability plays in the early stages of dating. As a millennial myself, I see many of my peers playing at extreme ends of the spectrum, either recklessly oversharing their emotional baggage or glorifying the poker face along with their social media showreel. So what is empowered vulnerability? It means creating a safe relationship and then with discernment and sensitivity, expressing all shades of vulnerability so that we're letting people in rather than offloading onto them. Thank you. Australians have just engaged in an historic, unique and powerful show of political will. We voted on same-sex marriage and why did we need to do this? Because the politicians didn't sort it out themselves. How many other issues are there out there, reforms that we are not addressing at this time? That's why I co-founded New Vote. It's a non-partisan, non-profit registered charity. Our purpose is to celebrate and enhance democracy. I mean, the, the, it's clearly why we need this. People have lost faith in democracy. It's the lowest level ever. Lo lost trust in government. There's disillusionment, disengagement. There's a disconnect between everyday Australians and their politicians. So I'm building an app to use the power of the internet and our collective knowledge to educate, discuss, co-design and vote on solutions and policy. Everything from the local school to climate change.